Hi YouTube, today I'm going to make a video on the Garmin G500 TXI engine information system, specifically the fuel calibration that's normally done by your dealer. And uh, my initial a, impression. Uh, a, a dealer install function because you need a, uh, a Garmin unlock card. So we're going to do nine calibration points for left and right main. Go through the checkbox. First, putting in unusable fuel. About 1.25 aside. There you go. Four gallons. Twelve gallons left. Calibrate. Okay, go ahead. Four. Are you detecting a pattern here yet? Are you detecting a pattern here yet? All right, go ahead with the last four. Right. All right, um, I actually have to recalibrate the left side um, fuel senders there. I don't know if you noticed, but when I did the calibration, the numbers on the left and the right side were pretty, you know, roughly equal until about 12 gallons. And then the right side rose significantly, the sensor readings compared to the left side. Um, I actually graphed it to take a look at, at what it was looking looking like and after 12 gallons there was a, a, a very significant linear rise in the data um, from the right from the right tank versus the left tank and looking at that I figured that, that probably means an outboard left wing sensor wasn't reading um, we investigated it and we did find that the uh, the left outboard float was jammed up against the stringer so we popped that thing loose, bent it back so that it would come down on the stringer this time. Um, but now we have to recalibrate it. So I flew the fuel off and it was kind of interesting. Um, it did what I was expecting. It showed full for quite a while and then all of a sudden it snapped down to like 15, 16 gallons. And once it got down to 12 and below, it was pretty accurate. But the higher side was, was all messed up because of uh, that, stuck, that stuck float. So it's time to do the left wing. So to start the fuel calibration, I have to go to the fuel, <clears throat> fuel quantity calibration, and I have my checklist again. Um, how many points? I'm actually going to do a nine point calibration. Thirty two gallon per tank. Procedure. Um, the last one I did when I did it originally was the main left and right. This time I'm only going to do the main left calibration. So I have to fuel, confirm the fuel gauge maximum is correct, and that's 32 gallons. Drain the fuel, it's been drained. Level the aircraft, we have leveled it. And I've set the number of points. And the very last thing is select a calibration procedure and I've selected the main left and I get to begin. So now I have, since I, cho I, I chose a nine point calibration because you know mathematically 32 divided by four gives me eight points plus my zero is nine. So the step is to add unusable fuel to the left main tank and wait until this sensor value is, uh, is stable. So we're getting to add the unusable fuel to the left wing right now. All right, I have my unusable fuel in and I calibrate. So now my zero is set and I have to add four gallons. Go ahead and add four gallons. Four. Okay, I've added four gallons. The sensor value is stabilized. Calibrate. So it's calibrated to four gallons now. Up to 12. That's 16 gallons. Okay. So that's 20.
Okay, looks like we did better this time. So the Garmin G500 with the integrated uh, EIS actually replaced my JPI EDM 930. And, you know, the, with the different um, with the different display, the way it shows the data, um, I decided I wanted to upgrade to the CIES uh, digital fuel senders. It's, it, it's a very, very accurate fuel sender, much more accurate than the old OEM resistive um, fuel senders. Um, it's it's the stuff that's going into the new Cirruses and things like that. So it's 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 a really good sender, highly accurate. And the reason why I really needed to do that with this upgrade is the way the fuel data is is displayed. I'll show you here on the screen. So here's the G500 TXI screen, um, and this is how it looks while you're flying. You know, I'm on the ground now, but this data here is. Uh, is the engine information data that uh, used to be given to used to be shown on the JPI? Uh, it's a much more summarized version. I do have a detail page that gives me some, you know, the EGT, CHT graphs and things like that. Um, the one thing that's very nice about this is, you know, during a takeoff scan, you know, you're looking at green, 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 green. You know, it's just a quick scan down to make sure you're in green. Now, uh, the one thing I had the old OEM sensors when I had my JPI EDM 930 and I always used the fuel flow uh, the fuel flow transducer calculation to tell me how much fuel I had it was much more accurate than the uh, the old resistive fuel senders I put the aircraft away and sometimes you know you put it away in a fuel sender saying it's 15 gallons and you get into it the next day and it's like 18 gallons and you know it was just I mean it was it kind of gave you a general idea of how much fuel you had in each wing, but it wasn't really that accurate. With the G500 primarily showing you what the fuel senders are showing, and that's what's static always on the uh, PFD, I wanted to have very accurate data here. So I went to the, uh, the CIS uh, digital senders, and now this is giving me very good accuracy on this gauge. Now, you still do have access to the fuel flow uh, transducer data, but you have to go to the engine page on the MFD. And you'll see here the estimated fuel remaining and fuel used, and this is based off of the fuel flow transducer. Um, has a very easy calibration, too. If you notice, you know, it said you burned 32 gallons and you actually put 33 back. If you go to the menu page, you go to the fuel computer, and you see estimated fuel remaining, you can calibrate fuel flow. And it will tell you, hey, I think I burned 24 gallons. You put in what you actually burned, hit update calibration, and it'll adjust your fuel flow right there to you know, be more accurate. Uh, and that's within a 10% limit. So, I mean, if, if your fuel flow is way out of whack and you try and use this to calibrate it, it'll fail and tell you to go back to your dealer. Um, so it's for it's just for the fine adjustment this calibration it's very nice user uh, user friendly thing here but you can see here here's the other data I mean you have some repeated gauges here over in a dial format with the oil pressure uh, the uh, oil temp, oil temp and the fuel pressure got your EGTs and your CHTs and the lean the lean uh, process is very simple you just hit this lean button and you start leaning up here your EGT it'll show you eventually when you get your peak it'll show you your peak it'll show you which cylinder peaked and in parentheses right next to it will be a uh, higher or lower from peak that you are so if you're going for like you know 50 50 reach of, uh, reach a peak you know that's the parentheses after that I, I'll, I'll do that in a flight video once I start doing some videos while we're flying the last thing I wanted to show real quick is uh, just something I just this is something you typically don't see I'm back into the uh, the dealer uh, this this is the setup pages here you need the unlock key for but uh, all the different sensors that you use are very easy to set up you can see oil pressure oil temp this is all configured by your installer but if I go down here to the uh, let's see fuel quantity so fuel quantity um, you can see it has digital left digital right but I can go in here you can choose your model and you can have you know voltage uh, you know, resistive, different you know ranges, zero to six hundred, you know different ohms. You can go through here. So 
you could choose digital or resistive or whatever kind of senders you have, which is very nice because in the past, like with the JPI EDM 930, to make a change like this, you have to send the entire box back to the OEM, where here the installer can just essentially select what you have.